I've been using this Intel 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro for over a year now with Apple transitioning completely to their new silicon M1 and M2 chips. The question is, is this MacBook Pro still worth it? Let's find out. Now Apple has a complete ecosystem around their Apple Silicon chips and if you were to choose a new MacBook now whether it's MacBook Pro or Air the obvious choice would be to go with Apple's new chip. I got this MacBook last year in 2021 July and at that time the only MacBook that had a M1 chip was the MacBook Air which came out in 2020 November. So this model was the top of the line MacBook Pro up until October 2021 when Apple released the new 14 inch and 16 inch M1 MacBook Pros. So I was a little early to the party. But having used this laptop for over a year now, the simple question is if you're in the market to buy high performing cheap laptop, is this still worth a buy? The simple answer might be no. But there's a lot more to it. Let me explain. As a full-time software engineer and a part-time YouTuber, I get quite a lot of work done on this laptop from coding to video editing and all my other daily tasks. Let's look at the pros and cons of this laptop before we decide if it's still worth a buy in 2022. By pros, I mean things I enjoy the most about this laptop and cons also known as things that could have been better. On the pros, starting off with performance. I have 2.5 GHz processor, 8 core Intel Core i9 with 32 gigs of RAM. I got a good 6 months of peak performance from this laptop before I started seeing some minor lags. Thanks to also ever updating apps. Not to forget this laptop was the most powerful MacBook Pro until October 2021 which was only 8 months back. Next up we have display. The 16 inch display is an absolute joy to use every day. You get so much screen real estate with 500 nits of brightness and true tone technology. It's an absolute fun to work with whether it's the creative work or my normal everyday programming job. Next we have the touch bar. Some find it useful and some doesn't. Clearly not a lot of market for it. This is why Apple removed it from their new lineups. I have a love-hate relationship with it. Sometimes when I edit I use it to trim the video and also while chatting you get emojis and word suggestions. And sometimes I find myself changing my terminal color for fun other than that, I don't think there's much use to it. Next, we have the speakers. This is one of my favorite thing on this laptop. The speakers on this machine is just amazing. I mean, listen to this. Easily one of the best in laptops. Next, we have the keyboard and trackpad. I believe this is the pro model they made the switch from butterfly to magic keyboard and it's a pleasure to use. It has 0.5 millimeter more travel than the previous butterfly keys and with huge trackpad it's just so much easier to scroll around and the overall user experience is just smooth. Now let's look at the cons also things I don't enjoy the most. Number one on the list is heating. If you're using very intensive or resource heavy apps it makes it almost impossible to use as a laptop. It can get ridiculously hot sometimes I often find myself using something below the laptop if I'm using it on my lap. I also have this foldable ergonomic laptop stand which reduces the amount of heat at the bottom. I absolutely love this thing. If you want to try it out, I will leave a link in the description below. Next, we have the fan noise. This machine makes some serious fan noise while using heavy apps. Listen to this where I'm using Premiere Pro, Photoshop, Notion and Chrome all open at the same time. Last one on the list is incompatibility with M1 accessories. I got a new Magic Keyboard few months back only to know that the fingerprint sensor on these new keyboards are only supported with M1 Max. And that really annoyed me. I often want to use only two monitor screens without having to open my laptop. But now I have to turn on the laptop only to use the fingerprint sensor. So at the end the question is who is this MacBook really for? So I would personally say if you're someone who's been using Windows and been fancying to move to a Mac or if you're a student who's tight on budget, wants to upgrade to a high performing laptop, this is something worth looking into because you can easily find a good deal on eBay or Amazon for somewhere between 900 to 1500 bucks depending on of course what specs you're going for. Or you can even find a cheaper deal if you're getting a refurbished one. So if you're in that category, definitely worth looking into. Otherwise, otherwise, I would say go for the M2 MacBook Air. 
Either way, if you found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. I will talk to you all next week. Cheers.